welcome back to the realm of unpopular opinions today as you can see by the title and by the thumbnail i will be doing my own ranking of all the studio ghibli films this has nothing to do with books i'm aware but as i've said many many times this is the vibe and the aesthetic that i'm going for with a lot of books these days so i also feel like it's kind of fitting now, a couple of disclaimers before I start because I don't want to get into it later. I have liked, I have now seen or tried to see all of them, almost. I will start from the bottom, <clears throat> but there are maybe two or three that I genuinely didn't like or didn't finish. I like over 90% of all Ghibli films, so the ranking is more so which ones I prefer personally because a lot of them that are lower on the list I enjoyed vastly and I will rewatch them probably many times it's just that among them they are not my favorites for one reason or another it's a theme I don't relate to it's a movie I didn't enjoy as much so <clears throat> keep in mind that I have loved almost all of these which is why I will start with the ones that I did not to get it out of the way and to praise the rest. So if there's any fan out there of these movies, good for you. <laughs> Absolutely good for you. They didn't mesh with me. So that is one thing. And another thing that I wanted to say is that there are a couple that I didn't finish and I will say why. But if you did finish them I and enjoyed them, I would really love it if you would try and convince me <laughs> why I should finish them because I feel really bad that there are movies that I started and didn't want to finish but I know why that happened so if you think there's a very good reason why I should give them another shot please let me know really let me know because if I'm left to my own devices I will never watch them <laughs> so that is it for the disclaimers let's get into the video because there's a lot of movies Let's start with the films I did not complete. I have a list here, so if I'm looking down, that's why I do not have all of these memorized exactly how I rank them, because a lot of them are very, very close together. So, the only one that I will never watch is Grave of the Fireflies. Might be a sin, might be a very good movie, but I've heard that it's extremely upsetting and very, very sad. That is not what I want out of my Ghibli films, not in, even in the slightest. I don't care if it's pretty, I don't care if it's a great message. If I cry at a Studio Ghibli film, I want it to be because I was touched or because I was happy. I do not intend to be sad while watching Ghibli films. So yeah, I will never watch this film. And you cannot convince me of this one. This is the only one that I will never ever even attempt a lot of people even said that they've watched it once and they will never watch it again so that tells me a lot actually so let's move on from that now my neighbors the amadas uh that's not really a movie i never see anyone talk about it isn't it like small vignettes or something like that out of like the daily japanese life so that one i'm sort of sticking to the side i'll watch it i have nothing against it but it's just very random so that's, that's that. I have no opinion on that. Now, the two that I DNF'd, which is a term you mostly use for books, but did not finish them. And these are the ones that I hope you can maybe convince me. Now, possibly controversial. So let's start with the one that's less controversial because I never hear anyone talk about it. Pompoko. Did not enjoy it in the slightest. I realized that I don't really vibe with Takahata's vision that much because both of the movies that I didn't finish I think were under his direction or writing or <laughs> whatever I don't really pay attention to like direction and producer and stuff like that so you know what I mean when I say it that it's his film I know this one also has like a, an environmentalist message did not notice that in the beginning it was neurotic like the entirety of the beginning and I watched like a half an hour I was just annoyed everything was irritating it was extremely neurotic very chaotic i had no idea what was going on i felt like i couldn't enjoy it unless i was five years old 
But then I went to IMDb and a lot of people seem to like the message. So this is one of those that I would love it if you could convince me to watch it because I want to see the message, but it was so impossible for me to watch. I just clicked out and that never happens to me with Ghibli films. This was a first. I just could not stand it. Next up, a bit more controversially, The Tale of Princess Kaguya. Now this one is very much a personal reason. Did not love the art style. Like I know that the whole point is that it's Japanese paintings animated. I did not enjoy it. <laughs> I didn't find it appealing. I'm sure it's very difficult to do because that much is obvious. I just didn't enjoy it. I don't love that style, especially when it's an over two hour long movie. Pardon. Did not enjoy it. Did not <laughs> find it pretty or anything. Plus, the story didn't interest me. When I, the whole description is like a man finds a girl and then later she gets suitors. I know it's their legend. I know it's their style. I just personally couldn't get myself to care for it. I also watched like a half an hour of this one too because I always give them like, not like 10 minutes. I give them a little bit didn't like the art style, found it very boring, did not love the idea that there would be many suitors later because that's boring and I don't want to watch a Ghibli film about it. There's enough stuff about that in live action. So this is again very controversial because I know a lot of people love it and praise the animation, which there is nothing wrong with that. I am sure if you enjoy it, it's very pretty. I did not like anything about it. Like usually even if I don't love the themes of the movie, the art and how it's made can force me to enjoy it in a way. This had neither for me. So this one and the last movie, I would love some really good reasoning as to why it's a fun story because the last one definitely didn't vibe with the characters and this one I do not like the art style so give me another reason as to why it's really good and that actually brings us to the end of movies I didn't finish or don't even plan to watch now let's go into least favorites yeah I am going to divide these in like least favorites but still love almost all of them middle of the ground which is like we'll rewatch them a billion times but not my favorites and then we're gonna have part three which is like if i saw this on like every day i would be okay with it so let's get started the bottom the bottom of the movies that i finished was the cat returns i hated this actually but it was pretty again <laughs> that's what got me through the movie did not like the plot i feel like it was a children's movie but not the good kind where it's just a mess there are good scenes especially like in the beginning when she's not in the cat world yet and with the big fat cat i loved him definitely good moments the second half though i was struggling not to click out of this one but again it's very pretty so i kept watching it this is absolutely the bottom because like the fact that they turn her into a cat and there's like I'm gonna try and not do spoilers and stuff, but it's kind of difficult. A lot of these movies came out like over a decade ago, so I don't know what to tell you. Did not love this one. The whole plot with the labyrinth and the king and no, no, just <laughs> did not vibe at all with this movie. And this one has to be at the bottom. Now, aside from this one, a lot of them will be really good. This is the only one that I genuinely didn't like. Next up, next up is Ocean Waves. I know a lot of people don't like this one. A lot of people haven't even seen this one. Now, I enjoyed it, actually, but I think its fatal flaw was that it's so short. Like, it felt like there was no time to get anything done. Essentially, it's a romance. It's not, not nothing else really is important in this story, and it's a bit of a frustrating one, 
but I think it would have been fine if it was drawn out a little bit more. I feel like it finally got going and then I paused it and there was like 10 minutes left of the movie and I was very, very confused. So I think this one just wasn't even given a chance to be a masterpiece because it was so short. Very pretty though, very entertaining and that old school type of Ghibli because it is one of the older ones. I'm talking shit now, but really actually decent and I feel like it gets... A whole lot of hate when it's really only flaw was that it was so short so I would still recommend this one unlike the cat returns that's it for ocean waves next up we've got my neighbor Totoro and you are like when I speak in English I want to say Totoro but I would say Totoro so you know <laughs> this one again just so you don't misunderstand me Aside from the cat returns, I didn't hate any of these, but I vastly prefer the Ghibli that's not strongly for children because when it is, I mostly enjoy the art of it. Like this movie was stunning, stunning, a lot of fun. We'll watch it again, but I'm not a child anymore. So the whole theme of it wasn't something I enjoyed that much <laughs> it had to go at the bottom because i didn't have a personal attachment to it there's no scenes that i can like point out that are my favorites there's no nothing sad for me personally nothing great for me personally but it's a stunning movie and i can tell why a lot of people love it why it was like the beginning of the studio, the proper beginning, why it's the logo. The creature of Totoro is just very unique and so attractive and the feeling and the greenery everywhere and the butterflies. It's stunning, which is exactly why I said this would be a bit of a confusing ranking because this is technically at the bottom of my list, but I still loved it, which is why these reviews will kind of be a mess. I will just keep explaining to you the higher up we go why this is more personally great to me. Totoro, still great, still stunning. I didn't feel a personal connection to it in the slightest. Now, Wind Rises, The Wind Rises, that's the last movie that he did and that's the most personal movie to him and you can tell I didn't care for it. <laughs> I did not care for it because there's nothing fantastical about it. A lot of Ghibli has fantastical elements to it. This has none. This is pretty much just about the guy that does planes and his life and his wife and stuff. So I definitely could tell this was very personal to him. Wasn't at all personal to me. Like it was again pretty. I enjoyed it. But this is one of those that I'm not even sure I'll watch again. Now why did I rank it higher than Totoro? even though they are all so close that you could pretty much ignore the ranking. I preferred, again, the adult themes. That's the only reason. But if I had to say which one I would rewatch, it would be Totoro. So this is maybe a little bit wrong. <laughs> ignore this. This ranking is impossible to do since I enjoyed almost all of them. But I thought The Wind Rises was stunning. Like the quiet scenes with the wind and after the explosion and stuff or what or earthquake earthquake i vastly enjoyed it was terrific i just don't think i'll ever have the need to watch it again because i think the more personal a project is the less people who don't share that experience will identify with it i can tell why this might hit someone very hard did not hit me at all so <laughs> would still recommend it because it's a very worthwhile watch at least once. I will do my utmost to not make this video an hour long but there's so many movies to go through so let's pick up the base. The last two in this category we have Ponyo. Now I feel like this one is a little blasphemous because so many people love it and I thought it was wonderful, it was stunning. I might rewatch this one actually again but it falls into the same category as Totoro. It was very much for children, like extremely for children. There's no theme that I related to that I could point to and be like, yes, that's very me because it's young children. They're both five years old and I think it's wonderful for children. I would have loved it if I saw it as a kid. 
didn't care for it as an adult. Nothing wrong with it. If you do, I just didn't compared to some of the other movies. I feel like if, if this was because I had a very unique way in which I watched Ghibli. The only one I really grew up with was Kiki. But I watched both Totoro and Ponyo later, like after I've watched more than half of the other movies. So I feel like I might have enjoyed this a lot more if it wasn't one of the last ones that I saw. <laughs> because at that point I was like, there are so many good themes in these ones that are more catered towards adults. This one just doesn't like fit the vibe that I've already established with these films. But still a stunning, stunning movie. Masterpiece, how he does the sea and stuff and the whole water aesthetic he really leaned into here. And I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Just there was nothing in the plot that I really thought wasn't childish, but in a good way. That's all I will say. And then lastly, we have From Up on Poppy Hill. This one is at the top because I have an issue with it, but I still prefer it more than these like for children or I have some flaws that I have to point out in them. From Up on Poppy Hill, I enjoyed the school aesthetic. I enjoyed the characters. I think it was very well done. It was very, very fun. But there is one jarring flaw that I cannot really stand in films and series in general that happened here. I'm not going to say it because it's a massive spoiler but if you've watched it you know why this might make you uncomfortable it's a trope i generally don't like seeing but aside from that very pretty movie love the relationships i love the whole clubhouse in school and how they did that it was a lot of fun to watch it and this is at the top of my least favorites list because it has one very big flaw <laughs> otherwise it wouldn't be this low now again a lot of these are very flexible this is just like how I've bunched them together you could ch exchange them I guess it depends on the day whether I prefer Totoro or Ponyo it from up on Poppy Hill could be my least favorite and then I could feel like watching ocean waves again so don't take this as a very harsh ranking because I'm not even sure I'm capable of that that's why this is so hard to do because it depends on the day what's really better for me than another one but when we get to my favorites that one is very concrete <laughs> we've made it to the category of middle ground now the first one here is castle in the sky or laputa depends on where you are castle in the sky also kind of geared towards children but this one feels more environmental and atmospheric because there are scenes where much like Totoro and Ponyo I'm like okay I'm not 10 years old anymore but then there are scenes where I'm like this is just immaculate <laughs> it's stunning it's very very oh, heartfelt is I guess the only word I can use here especially when they get to the castle in the sky the first half is a bit more childish but I think with when you're an adult with things that are catered towards children, there are very specific things that you enjoy because I think they kind of harken back to what you enjoyed as a kid. So a lot of the, this with like the other characters that fly that like aren't villains but then team up with them and with the like witch but not really a witch, that whole thing, I don't know. It kind of just <laughs> stuck with me in a way that I feel like I've liked stuff like that as a kid. So I really enjoy that aspect. I love the flying here and just the castle in the sky. That whole sequence was wonderful and the ending was just so pretty, which is why it's the first one in this category. Like it's, I'm less likely to rewatch this one than the rest of the list in this section, but it's so pretty. And I feel like also one of those that's very underrated. A lot of these films, are very talked about and then there are a lot of them that I feel like if people have watched them they never went mention them and I feel like this is definitely one of those I've never seen anyone talk about Castle in the Sky maybe I've seen a scene or two of the robots that are on the 
floating island castle, but that's kind of it. And I think it's definitely underrated, unlike Ponyo, who I feel like everyone and their mother has seen. Now, I am already rambling way too much. The next one, which might be kind of a surprise, when there was Marnie, it was just so nice because it's a bit more complex. Yes, it leans a bit into the sadness, but I just vastly enjoyed it. There was a twist that I did not see coming. Maybe I'm just stupid, but I did not see it coming. And the whole like, is it fantastical or is it not vibe was very fun to watch. And like the, the moors and the, and the lake and the whole just, and the, what do you call it in English? Like the mill with the spinning <laughs> thing in the rain. You know what scene I'm talking about? So this movie, I did not expect to enjoy. You're going to tell that I rank highly movies that I thought I wouldn't like, but I ended up very much enjoying. So the ending was a bit... I'm not sure if the ending would have been as fun if there wasn't that twist. But I enjoyed it. I vastly enjoyed it. This is one of those that's just such a... We're really entering the countryside vibes. Like, let's go out into the country to be healthy, to calm down, to recuperate. This is absolutely that, but it is also a little bit sad. Didn't cry. Did not cry, but was actually very impressed with the twist and with how it was handled and with the ending in general. So maybe a surprising addition that this is so highly. I feel mean putting some of these in the middle of the list or at the bottom of the list, but I, I warned you in the beginning. I loved all of these. It just depends on what you vibe with the best. So I feel like if someone's angry that it's not that high ranked, this is my list, obviously it might be number one on yours. There's nothing I can do about that. But the next two we've got are Spirited Away is first. I had a bit of a journey with this film. This was actually the first one that I watched since I was an adult. I grew up with Kiki. I will get to it later. And then when I kind of got into anime, I started wanting to watch more Ghibli films. And Spirited Away was the most famous one. So I was like, let's watch it. I think because I watched it in English, now that I remember it, did not love it. I found it very creepy, did not love the story. It was just no, no. And because of it, I thought I wouldn't even enjoy Ghibli movies. But then I watched it last. After I watched the rest of them, I watched it again in Japanese. And I liked it a whole lot more. Like it was, the whole message changed. The whole vibe of the story changed. I no longer found it disgusting, but stunning. So I had a bit of a trip with this one. I think it's because I expected to hate it that I enjoyed it so much the second time. But again, not a message that's really personal to me. It was just a beautiful movie, especially with the with Haku and with the whole, again, sea aesthetic and with the witches. Lovely movie. Absolutely love it. But because I had that not instant like to it, it's just not one of my favorites. But I will watch it probably a billion times because it's wonderful. Then next up we have Porco Rosso, which, <laughs> which I officially watched last. That was like the last of the really main Ghibli movies that I hadn't watched yet. And again, it's ranked highly because of how much I didn't expect to watch it. When I saw that the main character was a pig, I was just not interested. And then it surprised me with how much I loved it. Because one, it's set in the Adriatic and on, like, on some of the Croatian islands, so that was kind of a draw for me. But it was so wholesome and funny at the same time. There were just moments where I was like, silent and I didn't expect this to be so hard hitting because it's a main character the main character is a pig and we never really get an explanation for why or how he might fix it or if he would ever fix it at all so it was a very very surprising entry 
in the whole studio's history for me, which is why I had to put it at this spot. It shocked me how much I enjoyed this film. And I've also never really seen someone talk about it, sort of like Castle in the Sky. Like, obviously, people have watched it because I'm pretty sure everyone's watched almost every Studio Ghibli film, if you like even one. But I never see this one even mentioned, so... A very much a surprise for me. I've got three more in this category and I already feel like I'm rambling, but I really want to articulate why I liked and didn't like each one of these. But next one is, surprisingly enough, only yesterday, and that is because the setting of that film might just be one of my favorites. It's again very cottage y slow living countryside. And again, the point is kind of a romance and growing up and stuff. This is also the oldest romance, I think. Like, the characters are the oldest. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I had no expectations for this film. But I love how it handled the teenage issues and them as adults. And just the setting, it, it speaks to me. If I had a place like that that I could go to, I would probably never leave. This movie is just, just a vibe. I can probably play this movie and just stare at it without even listening to what they're saying, but it's a great movie nonetheless. So this one has to be in a very special position, not my favorite, but I could probably watch this one way more times than some of these other ones because the story isn't heavy at all. It just feels like a, like soup. Like it glides down your throat like silk. It caresses your eyes with like comfort. Wonderful, wonderful, absolutely beautiful. And if you just love the way Ghibli movies make you feel, I would definitely recommend this one. Next up is something that is very contradictory to everyone who loves Ursula Le Guin, and that is Tales of Earthsea. Was this a good adaptation? No, but there's a very big but. Miyazaki doesn't adapt. Everyone knows that Howl isn't a good adaptation. He barely just took some elements and people still love it, which is why I'm confused as to why they hate this movie. It's also stunning. It's really fun, especially if you've not read the books. I watched the movie first and that actually got me to read Ursula. It's stunning. It has a wonderful ending. There's a beautiful song. It's very profound in the essence of her writing, even though they didn't adapt to the story A to Z. They kind of like mixed, mixed up the elements of more than one book. But again, Howell isn't an A to Z adaptation either. He pretty much just got the characters, got the vibes, and said, okay, this is my iteration of it. Now, this one was done by his son, but there's no way that he wasn't involved even a little bit because that's apparently his favorite book of all time, Earthsea. And you can tell because I loved it a lot more, actually, after I read it. I loved the movie when I saw it the first time. I loved it a whole lot more after I read it because it captures the the crux of the story. The main point, the main message, like the ending is what Ursula was going for even though the movie wasn't really an adaptation, which is why I think it gets hilariously a lot of hate. I know one of the elements was that all of the characters weren't, dark-skinned like in her books but the people that made it are Japanese all their characters are Japanese like I'm pretty sure even in Howl a lot of them don't look like they're like British <laughs> if that makes sense they look Japanese like that's his style so I didn't really see an issue with that because he kept everything the same but that aside, you can be angry about that. That's just one of the things that I think was kind of a given because again, he's not an adapter. He just does the story his own way with the same elements as the works he's adapting. So love this. 
do not understand the hate he gets for it because as a massive fan of the book series, I love this. I absolutely love it. And I think it was, it was what Howl was for the book. I'm shoving this one last because I really wasn't sure where to put it, but it's not, it's not in the favorites list and it's Howl's Moving Castle. It's not, it's just not because I don't love the story. Like I vastly enjoy the soulmate trope the find me across the universe and time trope it's a beautiful movie the soundtrack is iconic i could watch it a billion times but it's just not my favorite <laughs> it's just not my favorite and you will see why you will definitely see why when i get to my favorites because there's one thing that i place above all else in the ghibli verse and this does not have it but it's so close it is so so close Every time I watch Howl, I feel like I like it more. So it's like on, on the very end of middle ground and skirting the edge of all time favorite Ghibli films. It's just not quite there. Absolutely understand why it is a lot of people's. It's just not mine, but it's wonderful. It is absolutely wonderful. But again, sort of like the last movie that I talked about. Apparently it's an awful adaptation and still no one has any issues with it because it's a wonderful film and it absolutely is. So <laughs> I am sorry. <laughs> Try and limit myself to like a minute, two minutes per movie because these are my favorites and I could rant about them for hours. So the bottom is Nausicaa and the Valley of the Wind. I think that's the full title. I'm not really sure how to pronou pronounce the name, to be honest, Nausicaa. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Also a movie that I feel like a lot of people haven't seen because it's so old. I thought Totoro was the first one, but apparently he started Ghibli with this, if I'm not mistaken, because that's the manga that he was doing and then he made a movie for it and that was kind of the beginning of it. Like it's very, very old school art style, but it's so pretty. But this one I don't actually love because it's pretty. This one I love because of the message. I was very sick that day and I still vastly enjoyed this because, and we are entering into why I love almost all of these. Not all of them have this element, but nature. People and nature and their connection and how we have to protect it and how we love it and how it's getting destroyed. This is up there. This is very much up there. It's very environmentally focused, which is why I can tell that's why he started it off with this. And it actually got very dark. Like in all the movies where he really focuses on the we are destroying the planet themes, it gets actually very dark, especially near the end but I loved it. The reason that it's in the bottom is because it's very long. There's like a lot of parts of the movie that dragged a little bit for me, which is why it's at like at the bottom of this list. But this again is a message that especially in Ghibli, I love seeing. I absolutely love seeing. Anything he has to say about this, I agree with. So this was perfection for me. Absolutely perfection for me. I wouldn't rewatch it maybe as often as I would some of the lower ranked ones, but this one meant a lot more to me personally. So it has to be in all time favorites, but there's a movie that did this better in my opinion. And you know which one I'm talking about. But next we've got <clears throat> Kiki's Delivery Service. This is where we get into the nostalgia. I grew up with this movie. My uncle actually got me the movie on CD and I watched it before I even knew how to read subtitles because he got it in Japanese. I'm not even sure if like the dubs were made then. He got it for me in Japanese and I couldn't read subtitles yet but I still watched it because it was beautiful. Like every scene is just like lodged into my brain. This is the one that's absolutely nostalgic which is why I said I feel like if you watch a certain one first you're gonna have like a personal connection to it. This is one of those for me. I grew up with it. This is pretty much the only Ghibli that I watched for like 17 years. <laughs> so 
and I didn't even like know there were other ones to be fair when I was a child I loved it I absolutely loved it I could watch it daily if I feel like I need to be comforted I will watch it but it has a very glaring flaw I never enjoyed the second half of it because the ending of it is a message that I dislike similar to why I hated Narnia so it's a little bit ironic that it's in my favorite, but I think it is absolutely because of the nostalgia factor. Do I prefer a lot of the movies that are ranked below it? Yes. But I will still play Kiki before I will play like Howl or Spirited Away because it is just that nostalgic for me. I hear that Kiki song and I'm just transported back to my childhood. So this one is very much a personal favorite that I wouldn't necessarily say is objectively my favorite, if that makes any sense. <laughs> and next we have, again, a personal favorite, Whisper of the Heart. This one has nothing to do with nature or the environment or like a very profound message, but this is probably a comfort film for me because the romance is just so slow and subtle. The, the girl is a writer and wants to be a writer. That definitely hits me. And it's still so stunning, even though it has nothing to do with like <laughs> nature conservations. This one is absolutely, absolutely a personal choice. So if you tried and asked me to elaborate as to why I prefer this to, I don't know, Howl's Moving Castle, even though that also has a soulmate trope, I wouldn't really be able to articulate, but I just prefer this one. I prefer it. It's so comforting to me. I will just play it and be very happy. Like when I was down at the seaside on holiday, I was feeling miserable one day and I just played Whisper of the Heart. I love it so much. And her as a writer is very relatable to me. And the romance is just so, so, so sweet. I love it. Lo I love Whisper of the Heart. And this at this point, I don't even care if you disagree with me. So I didn't care in the beginning, but you know what I mean. It's like... I love it so much that I don't feel like I need to explain it. We have made it to the end. These two are so close together by how much I love them <laughs> that I cannot, they are the only two that I own the like art of the movie books for. Nothing can come close to these two. So it was very impossible to rank them, but let's start with this one. Princess Mononoke. I refused to watch this one for the longest time because I heard it was the most violent Ghibli film because there's like blood and stuff which isn't that common in the other ones. I was very upset I hadn't watched it sooner because this is basically Nausicaa but done better. Like he put in so much more effort. It's the prettiest by far. The message is way more harshly put into words. And every single minute of it, and it's very long, is worthwhile. Like, it gets you crying by the end just because you were touched very profoundly in the heart. <laughs> and I, I have no words for it, to be honest. Like, if I thought everyone had to watch a Ghibli film, it would probably be this one. Will I watch it for comfort? Not really. Not really, <laughs> because it is so deep to me and very profound and very important. That is why I will definitely not rewatch it for comfort. I think I've watched it twice now. I love it more every time I watch it, but it's not. It's a happy movie, but it's not happy throughout the movie, if you know what I mean. But it had to be at the top of the list. But because for Ghibli, I mostly gravitate towards comfort. My actual favorite is Ariete. I watched it on a random evening. <laughs> and it changed my opinion on what I actually love in movies. This takes its time. This is so slow that if you realize you're annoyed by how slow it is, you have to rewire your brain to be like, you don't have the attention span needed for this anymore so you will sit down and you will watch it and there's like so many scenes where it's just rain dripping off leaves or like bugs walking around the garden or ariete just taking a walk through the yard where nothing else happens 
nothing else happens. This is the movie that really forces you to examine how much <laughs> hustle culture and very, very quick and explosive media influence your brains. Like if you watch this movie after you've been on TikTok for hours, you will think there's something wrong with you because you are so like jittery because of how slow it is, which is why I think it like cured my I'm not going to say issues, but it definitely reminded me that I need to take it slow. And I loved every second of this film because it's so light and fluffy, but it still has an ending that will make you cry and made me cry. But it's just so wonderful. I have nothing bad to say about this movie. I have nothing bad to say about it. I The soundtrack is incredible. Every single plant, that's what I got from the book, every single plant that they did in the garden, they want it to be a real plant so you can like look it up and it's actually a real plant. They, have, they took so much effort with this, with every single shot, with every single leaf, with every single like shingle on the roof. This was just a passion project and a masterpiece because it combines slow, comforting fluff with still a deep message and also nature and like kind of the fantastical and the the way that the world works and we have to kind of step back and remember that we're not supposed to like run towards our death without actually doing anything i love it like now that i'm talking about it this is very much better for me personally than Mononoke. I can rewatch this one many times and I think I've actually watched that one the most aside from like Kiki because I grew up with it. I've watched this one the most. If I just want to feel so so good but still feel like I'm tearing up I will watch this film and I know a lot of people maybe haven't watched it because it's one of the later ones like it's I think the only one that came after this was The Wind Rises. Just just a masterpiece. I will recommend this to everyone and their mother if they will ever listen to me. So if you've gotten anything from this video, it's that you have to watch Princess Mononoke. But if you want to feel good and comforted, watch Arieti. Just do yourself a favor and watch it. That is it. That is it for the video. It is very long. I can already tell that. But that's because these are all, almost all, wonderful, wonderful films. And I wouldn't do them justice if I just sat down and was like, this is a great film. Watch it. I know there are many, many lengthy videos probably on every single one of these films. Because the world loves them. And I am the first person who, was, who will say that there's a reason for that. There are many overrated things. This is not one of them. And my love for them just knows no bounds. I'm honestly a little bit depressed that I'm done because there's not, aside from the new one that he's making, there's no Ghibli film that I've never like watched or interacted with. There's no Ghibli film I have to discover as a new favorite. Like this is kind of it. I'm done. <laughs> but I love them so much. They're just everything I want for in a movie, in a story, in a animation, everything, soundtrack wise. So, and how much he focuses on, in every movie, even though it has nothing to do with the environment, maybe like his just hyper fixation on the elements. Like you will always hear the wind rustling through the leaves. There will always be rain and like rivers and drops on leaves and he just really loves his elements and green and blue and I love him for it. I think because of Studio Ghibli films, I realized how much I love the color green. <laughs> so it's just so easy on the eyes. But now I'm rambling. But if you're someone who loves Studio Ghibli, then you maybe enjoyed it anyway. You could be fuming that your favorite movie of all time is like at the bottom of my list. But I don't know what to tell you because unfortunately univer universal experiences do not exist. <laughs> so, and there's not really that many that I hated. So there's nothing really to be angry about. Unless your favorite by some chance is like 
Grave of the Fireflies or Pompoco, in which case, I'm sorry, <laughs> I really am. But that is it. That is it for the video. I will stop rambling because I will just start gushing if I don't cut myself off here. So I will see you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed and maybe we will get back to books. <laughs>